When most people think of Fayetteville and the Civil War, they think of the Fayetteville Arsenal. However, did you know that on the Cape Fear River here in Fayetteville, we had a fortification called Fort Booth? I'm Joseph Westendorf, a librarian in the local and state history department at Cumberland County Public Library. And today, we go to the Fayetteville History Museum's riverboat room and then to the Cape Fear River, where historian Bruce Dawes will enlighten us about Fort Booth and the Cape Fear River and the Civil War. We're here today to talk about gun emplacements and fortifications along the Cape Fear River during the war between the states. To start with, when it looked like North Carolina would secede from the Union, Governor Ellis called upon local militia units to seize critical military assets across the state of North Carolina. For Fayetteville, that would be the Fayetteville Arsenal. And the Fayetteville Arsenal soon went from a arsenal of largely storage to an arsenal of production. The Commandant, Captain uh, John C. Booth, worked diligently, extremely hard, to put the arsenal on a war footing. Among the many things that were done was to put a gun emplacement on the Cape Fear River where the Cape Fear River and rockfish come together. It was a commanding position and would enable the Confederate soldiers from the arsenal assigned to this artillery piece to keep Yankee gunboats from coming up the river. That fortification was named in honor of Captain Booth who died in 1862. Uh, it was officially Fort Booth. Uh, legendary um, accounts call it Fort Folly. We don't know for sure, but allegedly uh, while practicing on barrels floating in the river, uh, one of the um, shots went awry, knocking the chimney off one of the plantation houses on the opposite side of the river. Fort Booth remained in place until um, General Sherman of the Union Army was closing in on Fayetteville, and of course the Confederates wanted to deny the enemy any access to things that could be used against them. So the guns at Fort Booth were taken away or disposed of in the river. And this is a uh, history mystery. We know a lot about what occurred during the war between the states here in Fayetteville. We don't know what happened to those guns. There was a lot of speculation that they went into the river. There was actually some people that said that during uh, Low River they sighted the guns. Underwater archaeology explored that area around Rockfish and the Cape Fear River and found nothing. So they could have been taken away, disposed of in the river, but we do not know for sure uh, what happened to those guns that were there. Uh, in later years, people conducting an investigation of where that gun emplacement was discovered large spikes that were used uh, in, in building up that fortification, and those are now on display at the Fayetteville History Museum. Nothing else survives from uh, Fort Booth. Behind me is the Cape Fear River uh, and the confluence where Locks Creek comes into the river. It is pretty significant because on the opposite side, or on the west bank, was the riverboat landing for the city of Fayetteville and the riverboats that were utilized during the war between the states would dock here at the uh, riverboat landing. Uh, in 1863, we have the next set of fortifications built along the Cape Fear River. These fortifications were built uh, largely by slave labor. Uh, they're nicely preserved. Uh, they're on the high ground in front of where I am now standing and would protect uh, the river. Uh, these were built uh, as a consequence of uh, the outcome of the battle at Gettysburg. It certainly had a 
renewed interest in uh, protecting uh, the inland port. It would be a little bit closer in than Fort Booth, uh, would protect uh, not only the city, but the valuable Cape Fear River Bridge, uh, the early Cape Fear River Bridge that was built in 1819 was a wooden covered bridge and stood where the present day Cape Fear Bridge now stands. Uh, as the Union Army approached Fayetteville, uh, that river bridge was burnt by the Confederates crossing over as a delay in action. So we know that Lieutenant McCorkle and his men that were tasked with building the gunworks were here as late as March the 8th of 1865, which was three days prior to Union General Sherman coming into Fayetteville. Uh, also, we had Captain Tucker of the Confederate Navy who brought 300 sailors and Marines into this area in February of 1865. Their stay in Fayetteville would have been short-lived as Sherman again came into Fayetteville in March of 1865. The earthen works behind us are well preserved uh, just because over the years this area which is undeveloped uh, had natural uh, vegetation growing on top of it and it wasn't until local archaeologist Ken Robinson examined the area determined how pristine these uh, earthen works still are. So the last set of fortifications that were put up on the Cape Fear River uh, during the war between the states was in North Fayetteville. It was thought that Sherman's army may approach from the north. And so extensive uh, fortifications, earthworks were placed from the Cape Fear River across Raleigh Road, uh, largely done by slave labor. Um, remnants still exist on the property of the Veterans Hospital where a state historic marker commemorates their presence. Um, Sherman fooled us and came from the southwest and the south, so those fortifications were never utilized but are still in existence partially today.